So this is going to be a fun video. Well, fun for me because I'm a QuickBooks nerd. But uh, I'm going to copy something that my friend and my friends, Doc's Leader and Seth David, did a couple of years ago, which is compare QuickBooks desktop, I believe it was 2013 version, versus QuickBooks DOS, which I believe it was like a version from 1991 or 1992. So I was able to get my hand on a version of QuickBooks version 2.1, which was released in 1992 or 1993, as, as you can see there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare uh, every function of QuickBooks Desktop from 1992 versus now, which is 2019, so we can see how much it has evolved or not really evolved in the last 20-odd-something uh, years. So let's start with uh, QuickBooks Online, which is the most popular, most commonly used version of QuickBooks. So let's start with something simple like writing a check. So the way you write a check in QuickBooks Online is you click on the Quick Create button on the top right of the screen, and then you click on Check. Okay, so once you do that, you get what looks like the image of a, of a check or kind of like a checkbook where you select the vendor's name up here. You select the source bank account you're paying from, the date of the check, the check number, the category or the expense account, the total dollar amount, and then you click uh, save and close and you are all set. Let's move over to QuickBooks uh, DOS and see what that looked like back then. So you get a menu of basically nine options, uh, checkbook, invoicing and receivables, accounts payable, chart of accounts, reports, company list, set up and customize, use tutorials and register, which you really don't need and obviously exit. So it's really just seven options. So I'm gonna go here under checkbook and I'm using the arrow keys in the keyboard, but it's actually mouse enabled too. So I, I don't know how that worked back in 1992 if you could use a mouse with DOS. I actually don't remember. I think the answer is yes. Uh, mouse did work uh, back with DOS. So you can use the mouse as well. So I'm gonna click on checkbook, okay? And it pops up uh, three, three options. Write a check, go to the check register or reconcile. So I'm gonna double click on or just click once on write check. And the first line I get here is pay in the order off. So this is where I choose my vendor's name. So I can either start typing here. So I'm gonna type something and nothing shows up or I can click on it and it'll show up, it'll ask me to choose from a list. So I can click on vendor list and it'll take me to my current vendor list that is there now. So I'm gonna pick, uh, uh, let's say this one, bar clow custom products. And it tells you the balance real quick, but I don't need to do anything with that. And I'll double click on that and that will basically load the vendor's name in there just like it does with QuickBooks with uh, the drop down menu. So I'm gonna put there $100 and then I'm gonna hit on tab. Uh, QuickBooks basically writes what, we, what would look like in a check. So the DOS version looked a lot more like an actual check from a checkbook because that's what they were trying to do. They were trying to get people to transition from paper checkbooks into um, into a digital system. So then uh, the address pre-populates, I can put in the memo like saying here for March whatever it happens to be. I could put a date here. I'm going to use uh, dates from 1995 because I believe this sample data has uh, 1995 data. And then under account, notice I can do uh, splits. If I can scroll down, I can split it in many accounts. I don't know what the list limit there is. I really don't care at this point, but I'm going to uh, click there and then let's say I, want, I wanted to do advertising. So I start clicking A and AD doesn't show up. I can click on it itself. Whoops, I closed it. I'm trying to see if I get a drop down menu of my accounts. I don't get a drop down menu of the accounts, so that's kind of interesting. So I guess you would have to know what the accounts uh, are called. I don't see a shortcut to get a drop down of that. So I guess they weren't that advanced back then. So I'm gonna type advertising, because that's actually the, the account I wanna use. So advertising and then hit tab. Okay, so then it tells me it's not, the account is not found. Then I can click on select from the chart of accounts and then it gives me the chart of accounts. Okay, so I have to put the, the wrong one in order to get uh, my chart of accounts. So let's see if we have anything close to uh, advertising in here. I don't see advertising others, uh, AD, okay, I guess that's it, AD. So they shorten it on this one. So I double click on that and that uh, puts it in there. Let me try this again, put A, D, okay, hit tab. Okay, so I guess it's called AD. Probably I can go back to the chart of accounts and change that. So I'm gonna put 
uh, one month of ads, whatever it happens to be. I can also job cost it, which is pretty cool, which you can do that in QuickBooks Online too, which is select uh, the customer related to it. I can also select it from my customer list. So I that's pretty neat too. You could job cost in QuickBooks DOS even in 1992. So that's pretty cool. All right, so then all I have to do at this point is just click uh, Enter or Control Enter actually to save it. So I click on Control Enter and that it even has the beep, the famous beep from uh, QuickBooks Desktop. So there's my check, that really, that was really it. I'm gonna click on Escape so I can leave. And then I'm gonna ch show you uh, the check register. So I'm gonna click on the check register and basically you get to see all, all the debits and all the credits hitting my uh, checking account. So you get to see uh, the date, the pay, uh, the account that it affects it, the dollar amount, everything is in here. And I switch over to QuickBooks Online so you can see what that looks like in the QuickBooks Online environment. So I'm gonna close out of that. And then I'm gonna click on the gear menu and I'm gonna click on chart of accounts. And then I'm going to click on my checking account. I'm gonna click on view register. That's how you get to the register in QuickBooks Online. And this is a similar screen. I get the dates, I get the payees, I get the dollar amounts, the, the running balance, all that stuff is in here. Now in QuickBooks Online, I can create a transaction straight from my register. So I can create a check straight from here. So I'm gonna pick a, a vendor here at random, make this $200 and also make this uh, advertising. And then I'm gonna click on save. So in QuickBooks Online, you can add transactions straight into the register. Let's see if QuickBooks Desktop allow me to do so. So I'm gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom of the register. I could probably hit end um, on the keyboard and get me straight there. And there it is. So let's do this one, uh, 1995. And then let's say this is check number 100 and the payee, let's pick there, Bay Shore National. Let's make this $500. It's got autofill, right? This actually filled up the, the same um, memo that was there before. Uh, so that's QuickBooks, that's the QuickBooks line, both have that. And then the account, it, it put it under auto loan, but I could probably change that. Let's see, advertising. Yeah, I can do that. So I can change that to advertising straight from here. So for some reason, the account here is AD for advertising. So I hit control, enter. And uh, there's a discrepancy. I don't know what that means. Uh, it's, oh, okay, I guess uh, it automatically entered something that was there from before. So let me hit control D and delete that line. Okay, there it is, and erase this. So this is the autofill that uh, even QuickBooks uh, DOS had this back in the day where it automatically put uh, your um, your last transaction there. I wonder if there's a preference to change that. But QuickBooks Online, you can decide to put that or not actually. So I click on done, and then I'll click on enter. So record transaction, yes, re enter. <coughs> And good to go. You get the famous beep, and there is uh, the transaction entered straight uh, from here. So that's pretty cool. Um, the way you do things in the check register. Now, when I click on reconcile, I'm gonna pick uh, which uh, date range I'm gonna reconcile. So let's say I'm gonna reconcile to uh, ten thousand dollars, and let's say this is gonna be as of let's do 12, 12, 31, 1996. And uh, actually, that's not where the date goes. Let's see, let me hit enter, enter, enter. Okay, and there it is. And then I get to pick uh, which transactions are gonna be clear. So I basically hit uh, space on the keyboard to mark him cleared uh, or not. So I can mark him cleared and uncleared. And notice uh, here in the bottom, it tells me my total debits, my total credits, my uh, difference, all that stuff uh, keeps track there. So let's switch over to QuickBooks Online so we kind of see how that works. I'm gonna click on Reconcile. Then I pick uh, the ending balance, the date, whatever date happens to be. So I'll pick here 12, 31, 2019. Start reconciling. And then just like in the DOS version, we're gonna basically mark here with a check mark what we wanna clear and not clear so you get checkbox, not checkbox, you get the difference until you get to zero, you get to reconcile. So that's pretty neat. Uh, let me hit escape, escape, escape. Let's leave the reconciliation. Let's explore some more. Let's look at invoice and receivables. So I'm gonna click on invoice and then I'll click on write, print invoice. Uh, so this is what the invoice looks like. 
on the invoice number. So let me change the number. Yes, it does. So let me put here invoice 101. And would you like to print it? Yes or no? That basically queues queues it for it to be printed. I'm going to make this date 1995. Bill 2 will be my customer's name. So if his name is Hector and I hit tab, it tells me it's not on the list. So I can click do one time customer to create the customer or select it from the list. So I'm going to click on select from the list and pick a customer from here. So I'm going to pick uh, right here, Valesha's Boutique. So I'll pick that as a customer. It tells me it has an outstanding balance. That's pretty awesome. Uh, so let's not cancel the invoice. Let's keep doing the invoice. And then I can add comments there. That's uh, equivalent to the comment section in QuickBooks Online. Here's my customer's PO number uh, on their project. Um, I guess I could put, I don't know what, the, I don't know what this does. The project side, we'll skip that for a second. Quantity, let's do 10. And the item code, uh, whoops. I clicked out of it and let's go back to it. Let me type something and hit tab. Select from the item list. Okay, so there's my entire item list. So let's say we're gonna sell uh, some mugs, I guess. So let's go up and see custom mugs. Okay, cool. Four dollars and fifty cents a pop, taxable. If I hit no, uh, no taxable is calculated. If I put, let me try this again. Yes. No, that didn't work. How do I get into the tax line? Well, obviously, okay, there you go. Yes. Okay, that will calculate the tax. So that works the same way. You can mark it taxable or not mark it taxable. And then once you're done, you hit uh, Control Enter to record. Okay, and there's my invoice. So in QuickBooks Online, just so we can kind of see what that looks like. And uh, I can go to Create Invoice here on the Quick Create button, Create Invoice. And I select my customer up here. So the drop down menu, obviously, it's a big change from 27 years. Uh, pick the item, pick the quantity, the rate. Okay, there's my total. I can pick whether it's taxable or not. And then I'll pick whatever tax rate. And I get my total with tax or without tax. And then I hit uh, save and close. So there's no beeping on the online version, but there is on desktop. So um, let's just skip to reports because those are pretty fun. Actually, let's go to the chart of accounts and let's look for that account called AD, which I was kind of bothering me. So let me change this one. Let's see if I can edit this easily. Okay, uh, Hector has no registers. Not sure how to edit this. Um, there has to be a way. Let's see. Let's scroll up here. Where is it? AD. There we go. Uh, F7. So let's go to F7 actions and there it is so let's go to view and edit and then let's change that to advertising and marketing oh, okay whoops there's a shortage of characters we can use here so i guess i can only do that so um many many characters yeah so there's a shortage of uh, characters you can use here probably less than 20 so i'll hit done and then i just changed the name of that account from add to advertising. So let me click here on done and escape to get out of it. And now let's go to reports. Let's do a profit and loss. Let's do a custom and then we'll pick the date range. So we got uh, 01, 01, 1995 through 12, 31, 1995. Hit enter. Totals only. This is pretty neat. Totals only. Enter. So I can do cash or accrual, pretty cool, and enter. So it takes a second to build the report. There it is. So there's all my income lines. There's all my expenses. See my new accounts as chart of accounts. There's my subtotal and my net income, right? So something that I think is also pretty interesting is that you can do what's called uh, a quick zoom, which allows you to see all the transactions inside of a specific account. So if I select it and hit Control Z on the keyboard or click on it, double click on it, it will take me to the detail report that tells me all the transactions that um, compose that. That's gonna be the exact same interaction in uh, QuickBooks Online. So let's switch over to QuickBooks Online to just kind of uh, look at that, how that works. So we did, um, first thing we did is go to the chart of accounts. 
So I went to the chart of accounts and changed the name of one of the accounts here. So advertising. So I'm going to click on the drop down menu and click on edit. And let's call this advertising and marketing. I hit save and close. I just changed the name of my account. And then I went to reports and did a profit and loss, which uh, defaults. It doesn't ask me for the date range. It defaults to the built in one. So I'm going to click this year. So I don't have to type in the dates and click on report. And there's my report, my profit and loss report in QuickBooks Online. The same way as QuickBooks uh, does, I can click on the dollar amount and it takes me to a detailed report that comprises that line. So this is pretty much just for fun, just so you can see how much uh, QuickBooks on, on QuickBooks in general has evolved from 1992 on the DOS version all the way to QuickBooks Online. You can argue that there's been a lot of evolution in technology. You know, we have bank feeds, we have emailing invoices, which obviously wasn't an option back in 1992. Uh, we have tons of great technologies to communicate with our customers, but fundamentally, they really haven't changed everything. I mean, you go to the checkbook, you go to the invoices, um, everything works exactly the same, chart of accounts. So that could be just because accounting doesn't change or it hasn't changed, or because Intuit really hasn't found the need to innovate the user interface of an accounting system. So this may make you think a little bit about, you know, what's next for our profession. You know, it's, it's the new accounting software that's coming out, going to completely break free of this 27, 28, 30 year old system pretty much, um, and change the whole outlook and structure of how people do accounting, or will it always stay like this? I, I really don't use any other accounting software that's not QuickBooks. So I'm a bit biased. And to me, this all feels really familiar. Uh, the QuickBooks desktop, uh, the QuickBooks DOS version and the QuickBooks uh, online and even the QuickBooks desktop version. It all seems familiar because it fundamentally has used the same, uh, structure with, uh, you know, chart of accounts, uh, customer list, vendor list. So there might be some, some opportunities to build something from scratch that would completely, you know, change the, the look of the, the look and feel of, of accounting software. Or maybe there isn't one. Maybe the reason why it hasn't changed is because uh, people just don't want to change. People like this structure. In many ways, QuickBooks is kind of genius. You know, if, if they have a need to change their structure for 30 years, that tells you a lot about the genius of it. So you, I think you can have two opinions of it, right? Totally genius, amazing from 30 years ago, or hey, where's the innovation? So I would love to hear your comments, what you think about it, and hopefully you found the video to be fun and informational.